Today, I thought I would do a little bit of a comparison between my old Canon 6D and my newer Canon R6. Now, I've been using the R6 for a little over a year now, and I do love it. Um, it's great for video and also great for stills. However, I often shoot on both. And in all honesty, I can't really tell the difference in the image quality between the 6D that came out in 2012 and the R6 that came out in 2020. And I'd be interested to see if you can tell the difference. Now, this comparison will not be scientific by any means. I won't be going into kind of dynamic range charts and sharpness charts. However, I will be testing these in real world scenarios, quite specific to landscape photography, which is what I use them both for. And I'll be using them both with the same lens in exactly the same composition and the same settings to see if we can actually see any difference at all. Now, in regards to sensor, both of these have a 20 megapixel sensor. And at the time of release, the 6D sensor was known as a low light beast and one of the best sensors Canon had. And at the R6's release, it shares the same sensor as Canon's flagship camera, the R1. So again, it is one of the best sensors they currently have on the market. And of course, there have been a lot of other changes in the R6 or the mirrorless cameras. There's a lot of things it being mirrorless allows Canon to do and put into the camera, but will we be able to tell the difference on image quality alone just from looking at the pictures on YouTube or social media? And hopefully this video will help you if you're trying to decide whether it's worth an upgrade to a new mirrorless camera or one of the new Canon R cameras. But first, we're gonna go back to this morning to do some low light testing and see if we can tell the difference between these cameras before the sun comes up. Firstly, to test the cameras in a couple of different scenarios, I set them up side by side on the lakefront. It was just before sunrise, so the light was still dim enough to test long exposures and high ISO. I switched the same lens between the cameras to guarantee that the test was as fair as possible. Both these first shots were taken at ISO 400, f11, and 15 seconds. At these settings, it's very hard to see any difference at all. Can you guess which is which? Next, the same composition, but at an ISO of 25,600 for both cameras. Still at f11, this took the shutter speed down to 1 13th of a second. At this ISO level, there may be a slight difference, but to be honest, it's still anyone's guess. And any difference is almost completely removed with a quick click of Lightroom's AI denoise. After that, I moved around the lake to do a focus stack on each camera. A process that was much more pleasant to do on the R6, given its responsive focus and touchscreen. Both shots are taken at ISO 200, f11, one eighth of a second. Again, in these good lighting conditions and locked off on a tripod, the difference is almost indistinguishable. Mm. 
Now I haven't seen the images from this morning up on the big screen and nor have I edited them yet. But I'd probably dare to say that the chances are you can't really tell a difference between the two. Especially when kind of showing them on YouTube or on social media. But of course the sensor has improved in the R6 compared to the older 6D. You know, is there more dynamic range in this sensor? Yeah, there is. I think technically there's a couple of stops extra. And is it better in low light? Yeah, there is less noise if you kind of really pixel peep. As landscape photographers, we are pretty lucky that the way we shoot is kind of quite controlled. Even though the environment around us changes and the light changes and the weather might change, we are always locked off on tripods. And what that means is you can do things like exposure blend and focus stack and long exposures. And that will really close the gap between a kind of an older sensor and a newer sensor. You can exposure blend and kind of get rid of that dynamic range issue. You can do long exposures and avoid using higher ISOs. So there are ways you can get around it. So in some circumstances, it might not be worth going from a kind of an older model to a newer model if landscape photography really is your main aim. However, a huge difference in these two cameras and in the new mirrorless kind of R range from Canon is the ergonomics and usability. And in that regard, the R6 wins hands down every time. One feature where the R6 really does blow the 6D out of the water is with its in-body image stabilization. Now, this morning I was shooting a little bit with my 70 to 200 and I was shooting handheld in pretty low light. So what that means is, with this stabilization in the R6, I was able to get pretty sharp images with much lower shutter speeds, down to about a quarter of a second. Whilst doing the same thing in the 6D, I just couldn't get a sharp picture. Another feature worth considering when looking at kind of upgrading your camera to a new mirrorless, or to some of the new R range, is of course the autofocus. Now, as a landscape photographer, that might not be a huge factor, because like I mentioned before, if you're on a tripod, you can take your time to even manually focus or use a slower autofocus, and you have the time to be able to do that. However, if you're filming video, or if you might dabble in a bit of wildlife or sports, the autofocus in the mirrorless cameras is just completely unrivaled by a old school DSLR. It can track, snap onto eyes, snap onto birds and cars, and just kind of follow focus wherever you go. So you can lock it on and just shoot away and really not worry about having to focus. Whilst on my old 6D here, I was constantly using the center point, having to focus and recompose, focus and recompose. And with anything moving, that was really tough. So there, the R6 wins and it's definitely a worthy upgrade. One thing you may not have thought too much about, but it really makes a lot of difference in the enjoyment of using the camera. And that is the flip out screen that the new mirrorless camera has. I think the 6D Mark II also had a flip out screen, but this is my first time using one. And, and my God, does it make a difference? If you're shooting down low, you don't have to bend down and get on the ground and roll in the dirt or sit in the snow to see what you're composing. And if you're shooting up high, you can shoot above your head and just tilt that screen down and still see exactly what you're doing. So it might seem like a minor upgrade, but in usability, it is a huge difference. Another huge upgrade in the R6 are the video functions. Now, if you're a pure landscape photographer and photography really is your thing, you may not even need to use those video functions, but this camera is capable of filming 4K at 60 frames a second, 1080p at 120 frames a second, and it's my main go-to video camera. And it's a camera I use for most of my YouTube videos. And to be honest, it is fantastic having one camera that does it all. I can kind of head out with this body, take some great pictures, and also get some great footage whilst I'm out there as well. So it's definitely worth having that, even if you don't shoot a lot of video. Nowadays, obviously Instagram, TikTok, even clients, everyone wants video. So it's good to have a camera that you can shoot that with when you need to. Now, am I glad I upgraded? Yeah, 100%. It was a lot of money, but it was well worth it. In all honesty, after using the R6, trying to go back to the 6D is quite frustrating. The usability is just wildly improved. But in all honesty, I still use my 6D a lot for still images. I'll often film with the R6 and shoot with the 6D and I'll shoot with both and I don't really notice any difference between the results. But the enjoyment of using the cameras is drastically different and using the R6 is a hell of a lot more pleasurable than using the 6D. So if you are looking to upgrade, 
don't just consider the image quality or the sensors. Don't just pixel peep and look up the dynamic range quality or the noise in the shadows or how much can you lift the shadows in post. Consider the usability of the camera and all the other functions that will just make your photography more enjoyable and means you can really concentrate on getting the shots you want and not have the limitations of the camera getting in the way. Now, hopefully that insight of why I upgraded and the benefits I found from upgrading from an older model like the 6D, an old DSLR up to a new mirrorless camera like the R6 has been somewhat useful to you if you are considering upgrading yourself. But once again, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and hopefully I will see you on the next video.